In a previous episode on ratchets, a $34 gear wrench ratchet totally crushed the competition. So the question is, can gear wrench once again destroy the competition, which includes a $220 snap on, as well as some other very nice German and Japanese tools. In the first test, we'll compare the working arc swing of the ratchets. Then we'll compare the back drag. Finally, we'll test the failure load of each brand. At a price of only $14, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Duratec. It's a 90 tooth ratchet constructed from premium chrome alloy. It claims to have a four degree arc swing. We're gonna test that. They claim that their forward and reverse switch moves freely. The Duratec is made in China. The Duratec weighs 323 grams. Manufacturers sell ratchets using marketing information about arc swing and tooth count. They're trying to convince you that their ratchet is the best for working in a tight space. So let's see how the ratchets compare working within a 30 degree space. We'll see how many right to left passes it takes for one full 360 degree rotation. Gear slot, tooth count, and handle width all have an impact. And the 90 tooth Duratec claims to have a four degree arc swing and it's making about 14 and a half degrees of progress with each back and forth pass. So there's definitely some slop in the ratcheting mechanism. And the Duratec takes 24.5 back and forth swings to achieve 360 degrees. Also the price of $14, the same price as the Duratec, is this Crescent brand. It claims to have 72 teeth and a 5 degree arc swing. Teardrop low profile head for improved access. Flush mounted on off switch allows for better access in tight spaces. Product of Taiwan and finished in China. 303.6 grams for the Crescent. Even though the Crescent only has 72 teeth, it's actually doing better than the Duratec at closer to 15 degrees of progress for each back and forth swing. And the Crescent takes the lead from the Duratec at 20 four right to left passes. At a price of only $17 is this Capri Tools brand. It has 72 teeth and claims to have a five degree arc swing. True single paw gear gives this ratchet an unparalleled smooth ratcheting mechanism. It also claims to have a low profile for tight spaces. The direction selector does move around quite a bit when it's in use. The Capri is made in Taiwan. 279.9 grams for Capri Tools. Just like the Crescent, the Capri Tools also has 72 teeth and it's really struggling on this test at only around 10 degrees of progress with each back and forth swing. So there's a lot of dead space between the paw advancing from one gear tooth to the next. 35.7 back and forth passes. A close look under the microscope and you can see there's a lot of rotation or slop in the ratcheting mechanism. At a price of $34 or twice as much as the Capri Tools is this Craftsman brand. Instead of having 72 or 90 teeth, the Craftsman has 120. It claims to have superior rust protection with gunmetal chrome. Easy one-hand operation with quick release feature. Made in Taiwan. 344.9 grams for the Craftsman. And the Craftsman claims to have 120 teeth and it's only making 14.5 degrees of progress with each back and forth pass. And there's just way too much slop in the ratcheting mechanism to work efficiently. 24.5 passes is good enough to move into a two-way tie for second place with the Duratec. At a price of $37 is this Ghidorah brand. Ghidorah claims their ratchet is made of first class materials. If you want to go from loosening to tightening or tightening to loosening, you have to push the square coupler to the other side. Medium tooth and extremely rugged. The Ghidorah is made in Germany. The Ghidorah is the lightest yet at 239.7 grams. And the Ghidorah makes no claims about working in tight spaces. And the medium tooth ratchet has a very large handle and it's really struggling on this test at 36.5 passes. At a price of $42 is this Koken brand. Koken claims that their ratchets are known for very low backlash and small head sizes. They also claim their ratchets are designed for high torque ranges. 10% higher torque limit compared to 36 tooth ratchet. The Koken is made in Japan. 235.9 grams for the Koken. And the Koken has 72 teeth and the handle size is a little bit larger than average. However, the ratcheting mechanism seems very well designed and it performed good enough to move into second place behind a Crescent at 24.2 passes. At a price of $49 is this Facom brand. Lightweight body, compact head for ease of access, dustproof maintenance-free mechanism with five degree increment, easy reversal even with gloved or greasy hands. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the Facom is made. And the Facom weighs right at 248 grams. Even with a pretty large handle, the Facom is performing just as well as the Crescent at around 15 degrees of progress with each back and forth swing. And the Facom moves into a two-way tie with the Crescent at 24 back and forth passes. At a price of $50 is this Gear Inch 120 XP. Double stack paws alternately engage 60 gear teeth. It claims to have a very impressive three degree arc swing. Teardrop low profile head allows for access in tight spaces. The gear wrench is made in Taiwan. After destroying the last 90 tooth gear wrench, I went ahead and bought another one for my own use in the shop. The 120 XP claims to have an arc swing advantage, but it is quite a bit larger. 331.3 grams for the gear wrench. And the gear wrench has 60 teeth and two paws that alternate back and forth for 120 paw to gear contact points and 360 degrees. Unfortunately, the ratchet just isn't performing nearly as well as the less expensive 90 tooth gear wrench that we previously tested. However, 22.6 back and forth passes is good enough to move into the lead over the Crescent and the Facom. And the ratcheting mechanism has way too much slop or dead space between the dual paws advancing from one gear to the next. 
at a price of $51 is this Hazard brand. It claims it can handle up to 400 newton meters, which is 295 foot pounds. We're gonna test that. It claims to have 90 teeth and a four degree arc swing. Locking function of switch provides protection against unwanted switching. The Hazard is made in Germany and the Hazard weighs 259.6 grams. And the 90 tooth Hazard is performing just as well as the gear ranch, even though it has a pretty thick handle that's getting in the way. And the Hazard barely edges out the gear ranch at 22.5 back and forth passes to take the lead. At a price of $52, is this Asahi brand? Extremely lightweight and only 7 inches in length. The ratcheting mechanism has 72 teeth. The Asahi is made in Japan. And the Asahi is by far the lightest yet at 176.9 grams. And the Asahi is making about 15 degrees of progress with each back and forth pass. And the Asahi completed one full rotation and 24 passes, the same as the Crescent and the Facom. I had a lot of viewers request that I test this Tang Tools brand. It costs right at $56. 72 teeth gives a working arc swing of just 5 degrees. Slim design for confined spaces. More teeth engage simultaneously to create greater strength and torque. There's no information on the packaging regarding where the ratchet is made. The Tang Tools ratchet weighs 263 grams. With only 72 gear teeth and a very large diameter handle, the Tang Tools really struggle on this test. 35.5 back and forth passes, which is very close to the same as the Capri Tools. At a price of $116, is this Matco Tool? brand. Slim profile for better access and tight areas. 88 tooth ratcheting mechanism for an arc swing of just over 4 degrees. Recessed shift lever to prevent accidental shifting. The Matco ratchet is made and assembled in USA. And the Matco weighs 274.6 grams. And the Matco has 88 gear teeth, but it's actually outperforming the competition with just over 20 degrees of progress with each back and forth pass. And the Matco's ratcheting mechanism seems very well designed with the Paul advancing to the next gear tooth with very minimal rotation. 17.6 passes is by far the best yet. Very impressive. At a price of $121 is this stall wheel brand. The stall wheel even comes with repair instructions. The ratcheting mechanism has 80 teeth for four and a half degree arc swing. Made without screws to prevent foreign object damage. Includes a quick release safety lock. Designed for use in tight spaces. The star wheel is made in Germany. The star wheel weighs 275.2 grams. And a stall wheel only has 80 gear teeth, and in theory, most of the other brands should perform better. However, the stall wheel's ratcheting mechanism is making about 18 degrees of progress with each pass. And it took 20 back and forth passes, which is good enough to move into second place behind the Matco. Straight from Japan, at a price of $139, is this Nepros brand. 90 tooth ratchet with 7 step claw. It claims to have an innovative 90 tooth gear. Includes a quick release for the sockets. Reliable switch lever with positive action. The Nepros is made in Japan. 412.3 grams for the Nepros. And the 90 tooth Nepros is performing even better than the stall wheel at over 19 degrees of progress with each back and forth pass. And the stall wheel has a very efficient ratcheting mechanism completing a full rotation and 18.6 back and forth passes. At a price of $171 is this Stanley Proto. 90 tooth count allows for a four degree arc swing. Small pair head design for access in tight, hard to reach work areas. Includes a low profile reversing lever. Knurled bands allow for increased grip. The Stanley Proto is made in USA. The Proto weighs 423.8 grams. And the 90 tooth Stanley Proto is performing very close to the same as the 90 tooth Nepros. And the Stanley Proto is making about 20 degrees of progress with each pass. And 18 back and forth passes is good enough to move into second place behind the Matco. At a price to $221, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Snap-on. Unlike the other brands, the Snap-on does not have gears. No clicking sounds from the Snap-on, it's extremely quiet. It claims to have an arc swing of zero degrees. The Snap-on is made in USA. 305.8 grams for the Snap-on. And the zero degree Snap-on's handle is a little bit wider than average at 18 millimeters and it's just not performing as well as the top brands. And the Snap-on is supposed to have zero degrees of arc swing, but it's just not performing as well as anticipated. 22 back and forth passes is good enough to move into fifth place. So the Matco has the best working arc swing at 17.6 back and forth passes for one complete rotation. Stanley Proto performed almost as well at 18, Nepros 18.6, Stall Wheel 20, and Snap-on 22. Using a ratchet with a lot of back drag and tight spaces can really make it challenging at times. If there's enough space, adding resistance to the socket using finger pressure allows the socket to advance, but sometimes that's not an option. To measure the back drag, I'll use a 7 8 inch socket, fishing line, and a scale. For a $14 ratchet, the Duratec didn't perform too bad at 397 grams or almost one pound of force. And the Crescent performed better on the arc swing test than the Duratec, and it performed better on this test too at 293 grams. And the Cabri Tools moves into second place behind the Crescent at 366 grams. And the Craftsman performed very close to the same as the Capri Tools at 372 grams. And the Ghidor is extremely stiff at 598 grams, which is well over a pound. And the Kokim performed very well in this test at 224 grams to take the lead from the Crescent. And the Facom has more back drag than most of the other brands at 443 grams. 
And the dual pawl design of the gear wrench is really hurting its performance, 515 grams. And the Hazard performed about the same as the Fakom at 456 grams. And the Asahi performed by far the best yet at 170 grams. And the Tang Tools has by far the most back drag yet at 833 grams or almost 2 pounds. The Mako did great on the working arc swing test and it did about average at 388 grams on this test. And the stall wheel performed quite a bit better than the Matco on this test at 283 grams. And the Nepros barely edged out the stall wheel at 277 grams. And the Proto performed about the same as the Matco at 364 grams. And the Snap-on performed by far the best yet on this test at only 89 grams. Very impressive. So the Snap-on has the least amount of back drag at 89 grams. Asahi did well at 170, Koken 224, Nepros 277, and Stahlwheel 283 grams. So three out of the four top ratchets in this category are made in Japan. A ratchet that offers both a great working arc swing performance and low back drag pressure is the perfect combination. So taking the results from both the arc swing and the back drag test, the Snap-on had an average finish of third place. Nepros averaged 3.5, Proto and Stahlwheel 4.5, and Asahi averaged a fifth place finish. The ratchet head profile makes a big difference when trying to access tight spaces. And the Matco has the shortest front-to-back profile at only 12.2 millimeters. Crescent is also very compact at 12.54, gear wrench 13.6, Asahi 13.7, and Koken 14.3 millimeters. The ratchet with the slimmest side-to-side -side profile is the Koken at 27.9 millimeters. Fakom's at 29.3, Proto 29.56, Nepros 29.78, and Craftsman 29.94 millimeters. When the hands are greasy, it can sometimes be a challenge to change directions with a stiff directional lever. And it takes 404 grams to switch directions on the Duratec. Once again, the Crescent outperforms the Duratec at only 217 grams. The Capri Tools performed about the same as the Duratec at 418 grams. And the Craftsman made the switch at 339 grams. And it takes over 4,000 grams or 8.8 .8 pounds of force to press the square coupler through the Godor. And the Koken performed about the same as the Craftsman at 353 grams. And the Facom did by far the best yet at 171 grams. And the Gear Wrench performed almost as well as the Facom at 190 grams. And it takes 475 grams with the Hazard to change directions. And the Asahi performed better than average at 345. And the Tang Tools takes more force than average at 521 grams. And it takes 371 grams to flip the switch on the Matco. And the Stall Wheel did 100 grams better than the Matco at 271. And the Nepros is pretty stiff at 596 grams. Just like the Nepros, the Proto is pretty stiff at 647 grams. And the Snap-on takes quite a bit of effort at 1,356 grams or about 3 pounds. So the Facom came out on top at 171 grams. Gear Wrench finished in second at 190, Crescent 217, and Stall Wheel 271 grams. So the Matco, Proto, and Nepros have a much smaller head size than some of the other brands, but can they handle the high torque loads? To test the failure load of the ratchets, I'll use a Proto Torque Wrench tester, which is accurate down to one-tenth of a foot-pound. And a $14 Duratec actually didn't do too bad at 243.3 foot-pounds when the drive finally broke. Let's take a look inside the ratchet. And there's a small amount of damage to the gear, but both paws are in great shape. Even though the $14 Crescent is more compact than the Duratec, it performed a lot better with the drive finally breaking at 262.2 foot-pounds. The drive gear and the paw are still in great shape. And the Capri Tools is larger and more expensive than the Crescent, but it gave up early at 212.9 foot-pounds. And there's definitely a problem inside the ratcheting mechanism. And the Paul held up just fine, but the drive gear experienced a lot of damage. And the Craftsman is one of the heaviest ratchets in the lineup at 344.9 grams. And the $34 Craftsman moves into second place behind the $14 Crescent at 252.4 foot-pounds. Just like the Duratec and the Crescent, the drive is a source of failure. And the square coupler on the Godor gave up early at only 208.7 foot-pounds, the least amount yet. However, the ratchet is still in good shape. And the square drive is very soft and experienced quite a bit of twisting during the failure. Considering the compact size, the Coke can actually held up very well with the drive finally breaking at 260.1 foot-pounds. And the gear in the Paul held up just fine with no visible damage. At only 248 grams, the Facom is a very compact and light ratchet, and it's also the strongest yet, with the drive finally breaking at 286.2 foot-pounds. At 331 grams, the gear wrench made very good use of its size advantage, finally breaking at 295.8 foot-pounds to take the lead from the Facom. And the drive gear on the XP120 has 60 teeth. Since the two paws do overlap, it effectively gives 120 gear contact points and 360 degrees. There's no visible damage to the paws of the drive gear on the gear wrench. Even though the German-made has it is very light at only 259 grams, it's the strongest yet at 303.2 foot-pounds. Very impressive. Even with all that torque, the paws of the drive gear are still in great condition. 
And the Asahi is called a light tool for a reason, and it gave up early at only 186.6 foot-pounds. And the ratchet mechanism is no longer engaging, so let's take a look inside. And the drive gear experienced a small amount of damage, but one of the two paws has lost all of its teeth. And the Tang tools did fairly well, making it to 267.5 foot-pounds when the drive broke. And all of the ratcheting mechanism internals are still in good condition. Even though the Matco is very compact, it held in there a long time, with the drive finally breaking at 280 foot-pounds. No visible damage to the drive gear teeth or the paw. When it comes to back drag or working arc swing, the stall wheel performed very well, but it's not built to handle as much torque as some of the other brands. And the drive gear broke at 254.3 foot-pounds. The paw and the drive gear are still in good shape. And the Nepros has a long ratchet handle for extra leverage, but it's definitely not built to take a lot of abuse. And the drive gear broke at only 229.7 foot-pounds. The main drive gear teeth and the paw are still in good condition. And the Stanley Proto also has an extra long handle for applying extra leverage and it gave up early at only 186.6 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of damage to the drive gear teeth and the paw. And the snap-on withstood a lot more torque than anticipated and I had to readjust the position of the ratchet. And when the snap-on finally let go, it pretty much exploded, sending parts and pieces all over the shop. 310.8 foot-pounds is the best yet. And the Snap-on is missing some parts, but here are the parts that I could locate. If you need a ratchet that can handle a lot of torque, the Snap-on came out on top at 310.8 foot-pounds. Has it finished in second at 303.2, Gear Wrench 295.8, Facom 286.2, and Matco 280. So which ratchet is the best? The ratchets are organized from least expensive to most expensive, and the best value ratchet is definitely the Crescent. At a price of only $14, it's a great value and delivers really good performance. While it can't compete with the top brands as far as working arc swing, it performs very well in every other category. If it's all about performance, the Matco is expensive, but it performs well in all categories. While the directional switch does take a little bit more effort than other brands, it's still a pretty minor issue for most people. The Stawell is also pretty expensive, but it also performed well in every category. In the previous video on ratchets, the $34 gear wrench with 90 teeth easily won the showdown. When you consider the very affordable price, it would still be my choice over all the ratchets tested this time. All these brands claim to have great warranty, so maybe it's time to test them out. Just kidding about that, I never return products unless the product arrives defective before the testing begins. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.